Well, since God created life, then God can do whatever he desires to do with that life. This is one of the responses that I often get from many Christians. And one of the most disturbing stories of this, and one that they like to point out, is the story of Job. Now, even as a child, the first time I read the story of Job in around 9, 10 years old, I found the story to be incredibly disturbing because what I saw was an evil, maniacal God who just toys with uh, human life as a child would toy with an anthill. So in this story, it has many complicated issues that are actually very simple and show how evil this God really is. So in this story of Job, what you have, for those who do not remember, or only see it as a delightful story because of the way that pastors have utilized this story to say that Job got twice as much for being faithful, is the fact that Job is a wealthy man and his wealth is attributed to his righteousness. Now, as the story begins, God is sitting in his heavenly court with his heavenly host. And here comes Satan, the Satan, Hasatan, which means adversary in the Hebrew, but administrator in the Sumerian, which is the older language to which the Arcadian language developed from more than likely, which Arcadian is a Semitic language, and then later on it becomes Hebrew. Now, the Satan is not supposed to be where God is because evil is supposedly not where God can be so that was my first issue with how can the how can Satan be in heaven when the stories of Enoch and other uh, mentionings in the Bible that quote Enoch suggest that there was a war in heaven and that Satan or the evil one was cast down to the earth as a prison and that God cannot be where there is evil so how is Satan in heaven that was the first issue that I had and then while in heaven, it's not like there's a problem that's going on, or not that there's an issue that's going on, but this guy begins to brag about Job, Satan, where have you been? Back and forth over the earth into heaven. Have you noticed Job? Yeah, I noticed Job. He got a lot of good shit, and that's only because you give him good stuff, because he worships you, he bowed down to you, he gives everything to you. But Satan said, I bet you, but then God said, I bet you, it is not because of that reason. So they decide to have a bet that if you took away all of Job's wealth, then Job would know would curse this God. So this God gives uh, Satan permission to go down, but he says that he cannot harm Job. So he comes down, he kills all of Job's animals. So the animals are just dying for no apparent reason, except for a bet between God and Satan. And then he kills all of Job's kids. It's all the bullshit right there. So this God has such a little, uh, so has such little care and love for life that he allows innocent children, whether it doesn't matter if they're adults, but allow innocent adult children to be killed to prove a point to Satan. That's what we're going with. So he kills the kids. Job still does not go against this guy. Then Satan said, well, I can't mess with, I can't kill Job. God gives the Satan permission to mess with Job physically, but not kill him. So then he goes down, he makes Job sick. He gives him some boils, gives him some diseases and all these things. And he still can't. Now here's Job who worshiped this God who believes that this guy has been blessing him because of his righteousness and now he has no idea why and is questioning himself and has these uh, three friends who are questioning him and condemning him and saying you must have done something for God to take away your wealth for God to take away your children for God to take away your health you must have done some sin in order for God to do all these things because as I said they equated wealth and health with righteousness so then I had a problem with that because God is toying with this man over a bet with Satan but then when he doesn't relent when he still stays with this God even after his wife says just curse God and die he still stays with this God 
And then this God finally wins the bet with Satan. And once he wins the bet with Satan, he tells Satan, go on back down now. And, no, he goes down there. And he's like, we're going to give Job twice as much as what he had. Twice the amount of animals. Job is not really concerned about the sentient um, animals, so he's fine with that. But then his wife, they receive kids. Seven, I believe. They get, their, they get kids, but not their original kids. Their original kids are dead. Dead, 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 and dead. And Job is supposed to be happy because he got new children. As if new children will alleviate the pain of your previous children dying in a house that caught on fire. And when Job questions this guy about getting his original kids, this guy decides, I'm going to, I'm pissed now. I'm going to yell at you. Where were you when the earth was formed? Where were you? Do you command the lightning? Can you do this? Can you do that? I'm God. I can do what I want to do. If I want to kill your kids and then make sure that you and your wife have a bunch of more kids, then I can do what I want to do because you ain't nobody. You just Job. I'm God. I can just toy with your life however I choose to toy with your life. Because I'm God. If that is not an egotistical, maniacal mind to say that I can kill your kids, kill your, your animals, allow all these health issues to come upon you, and you haven't done anything, anything to deserve any of these uh, torturous things to happen to you. Why would I trust that God? If he would do that to someone who was supposedly righteous, sinless, hadn't been doing anything wrong, why would I trust this God? So as I continued to grow and I would hear pastors do this sermon and they would, in the sermon, they would talk about how Job was patient and you got to have the patience of Job. and You have to be able to stick with God through the good and the bad. And, uh, and you are not to question God because that was the sin that Job finally committed was to question God. And so just be happy with the things that God gives you. The, when God replaces your house, when God replaces your wealth, when God replaces your health, when God replaces your children, just be happy. Don't worry. Don't get mad at God because who are you to judge what God does as he toys and fiddles with your life as if you're some little plaything. That's the message? That's one of the reasons why I walked away from this Bible. Because if that's the message of this God, I'd rather live my life and whatever happens after this life without this God because I would not ever, ever want to be in the presence of such a tyrannical being. Y'all have a great day. And remember always, you have to free yourself to be yourself. Because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey, good vibrations.